Here I have my rebuilt outer frame with the now 12 slots instead of 6. Uh, the additional windings I'm going to put in, I'm using a shorter bolt or what would you call it? machine screw. Uh, I cut one of these off earlier to the appropriate to the same length to see if it changed really how much power it generated. It had a negligible effect, so I don't know if I'll bother to cut them all off to match. It's somewhat irrelevant. I guess it'll look better if I do if they all match. It's, they're already kind of attached together, so I'll just hook these in line the same way they were in the last one, except not spaced quite as much. The front piece is only an eighth inch thick. The back piece, let's see, what is it? Quarter inch, three sixteenths. It's a little thicker because it's going to be the structural piece. Some of these vary a hair in length. For the most part, I was trying to get about one inch of winding. Some of the decoration on the back now seems kind of irrelevant. Without the gaps in between them, you can't really see the, the little lightning bolts and stuff anymore. But, uh, I don't know. So now i got to make one, two, six more. Actually, once I got rolling making these, they weren't that hard to make. Some of the later ones actually seemed to power more. Might have had more winding on them. Or they're a hair closer to the middle. I'm going to attempt to demonstrate how I'm winding the coils. String right here. This is going to turn that way, so let's put them like this. Oops, wrong way. Make sure I got enough extra there. My first attempt, I tried to keep everything neat and even. It didn't really seem practical, so now I'm just kind of building it up to a certain thickness and calling it good. Holding it all together. Just a little fingernail polish to hold it all together. My daughter doesn't appreciate me using the fingernail polish, but I'll get her more. I'm working on the coils right now. I've got them all assembled, the, the additional six. A um, couple key things to note. I made a, my plan is a few notches in the piece of wood that they mount in. Doesn't really matter which ones you use as long as you use the same ones on all of them so that you can keep things straight when you're kind of hooking them up. Um, when you hook them up, you know, one wire comes from the, from the end where you start at the winding, one wire comes from the other end. You kind of, if you're going in series and alternating them, then, uh, you connect ends that come from uh, wires that come from the end together and wrap your one so it just kind of goes every other as you're doing that. Uh, it's key to scrape the uh, enamel or shielding off the end of these. It's kind of a tricky process. It's not tricky, but actually seems to always be a little bit left on, so you have to scrape it off thoroughly. 
Let's see, anything else? Hmm. Nope. Kind of my first assembly with all the piles in there. Appears that none are rubbing. Some are much closer than others. And I think that's kind of part of the reason why I saw him. I was seeing a different power generation when I was testing. Okay. Much like on the first one. I have my new one here. Um, I made some grooves. I don't know if you can see that in here. In the bar. It's going to be the main shaft in here. What I'm going to do is basically kind of fill those with epoxy. Center it in there. Actually, uh, I'll glue the spacers right on too, like I did on this one. Which I know I didn't show in the video, but on the last, there it is. There you have um, one of my first tests. I've hooked them all up in series, alternating the connections to match the phases and all that of the wiring. To a single rectifier. Someone pointed out uh, rectifying each individual coil probably uh, produce a better output. And I agree, that probably would, but there's 12 of them and I don't feel like hooking up 12 rectifiers. <laughs> so, now my initial test here without a capacitor. Um, see what we're doing here. So, we're running, so we're reading right around 23 volts, which is this. This came from inside of a um, 200 lumen bulb. The circuit inside of it actually produced 22 volts, so that's right where we need to be. Now what I am going to add to this is a capacitor. It's different than the one I was using before because that was a 10 volt one. And All right, I managed to get the capacitor. I have the capacitor hooked up right now. Running a little under 35 volts once the capacitor's on there. So that's um, about where we are with that. I'm going to hook up the light. This came once again came from a 200 lumen light bulb. I don't really recommend tearing a bulb apart. That actually ended up being a lot more effort than I thought it would be. Um, but uh, you know, it's done. It's done. Because these are so bright when it runs, you don't want to really look at them, they hurt your eyes a bit. I don't know if they would actually cause damage, but you'll be seeing dots for a while. So I just have a uh, plastic dome I spray painted with uh, Lone Dark paint actually. That'll filter the light down so we don't, uh, so I don't hurt my eyes. Just run her here. Get a bit of variance in the output, um, so we wouldn't necessarily have to run full run at that speed. We could, we, could, we could achieve a bit of light at a much lower rotation. That might help with the burn time later, I guess you'd call it. So we we'll just. <laughs> kind of glows green. Don't know if you can see that on the camera. So anyway, that is the power generation piece. Next, I need to make the gearboxes and stuff to uh, power it, to drive it. Thanks for watching.